Hello, and welcome back. This is day three of the HL Math Speedrun with me, Vince. And so today we're going to be going through chapter 1.3, which is all about proofs and proving things in math. So let's jump right in. So the first proof we need to know about is the direct proof. And so a direct proof is just a series of steps a, B, C, that lead to some form of proof. Actually, wait, I should talk about what a proof is first. So a proof in mathematics is just a logical series of steps like this that validates the truth of a statement beyond any doubt. And that's how the IB defines it, and that's what we'll work with. So how do we prove something? Well, usually we start off with something we know in, this, in the case of a direct proof. And we use some sort of formulas or theorems or things we already know to modify the original thing we know into something new that we can prove. And OK, so I'm going to be going through the exercise, doing every other question like usual. And this should be a pretty fast speed run. So uh, let's start with um, the odd ones today. So we want to prove that a plus b squared plus a minus b squared is equal to 2a squared plus b squared. This is a pretty straightforward proof. <clears throat> so well, we, we know that a plus b squared is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And we also know that a minus b squared is equal to a squared minus 2ab um, plus b squared. And so, I mean, looking at this, we can simply cancel out the plus 2ab and minus 2ab. And that leaves us with 2a squared plus 2b squared, which we can also write in the form 2a squared plus b squared which is exactly what we need to prove that it equals up here. So that was all for this first proof. Pretty simple. Okay. So for our next proof, we need to prove that a four digit number is divisible by nine if the sum of its digits is divisible by 9. Hence, identify which of the numbers 3978, 5453, 7898, 9864, or 5670 is divisible by 9 without carrying out any division. Okay. So this one's also, uh, it's a bit more complex. So if uh, the sum of its digits is divisible by 9, let's label the four digits A, B, C, and D. And we know that if, they, if the sum of them are divisible by 9, then they'll be equal to some integer times 9. Let's call this integer n, OK? And we know that, or what we want to prove is that 1000A say a is the first digit, plus 100b, plus 10c, plus d, which is reconstructing the original four-digit number using the digits, we want to prove that this is divisible by 9. So the first thing we can do is we can substitute a plus b plus c plus d as 9n in this equation. And so we get, um, if we subtract 1 from each of these, we get 999a plus 99b plus 9c plus 9n is equal to our four digit number. And as you can see, since all of the coefficients of each integer are divisible by 9, it means that the four digit number itself should be divisible by 9. And so that would be our proof. So 
now that we know that, let's carry, um, let's identify which of the numbers is divisible. 3, 9, 7, 8. Oh, it's this one already. Because, oh, wait, no, sorry, it's not. Uh, I was thinking of 3. 3, 9, 7, 8 is, uh, no, it is this one. 3 plus 9 plus 7 plus 8. Well, 9, 7, and 8 is 15, 18, 27. So it should simply be 3, 9, 7, 8. Let's just check that we've got that correct. Oh, jump too far. Um, three, nine, seven, eight. Yeah. Oh, which of the numbers? So there's more than one. Uh, five, four, five, three. Does this add up to nine? Ten, seventeen? No. So not that. 7, 8, 9, 8, no, because this is 15 plus 8, 23 plus 9 is 32, so that's not clearly. 9, 8, 6, 4, it is, because this is equal to 27. And 5, 6, 7, 0 is also, um, because that equals 18 if you sum it up. So, that was it. This is a pretty quick one. Now, let's move on to the next one. Oh, where's my text gone? So, uh, the next thing we need to prove is that prove, oh, it's lagging, prove that, and it's a long sum. So, that one-third minus two-ninths plus one over 27 minus two over 81 dot 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 is equal to one eight. Okay, so what we actually have here is we have the difference of two geometric sequences. One sequence would be one third plus one over 27, and this goes on infinitely, and we have to subtract from it to ninth minus two over 81. And if you watched my previous speedrun, we know that we can get the we, we can get the sum of an infinite geometric series as long as you know the common ratio is below one. And we can simply use the formula u1 over one minus r. So the first term of the first geometric series is one third, and the common ratio is one ninth. So it's one minus one over nine. So this will be the sum of that. And from that, we have to subtract the second series. So the first term is 2 ninths. And the, as well as the other series, the common ratio is um, 1 over 9. So let's evaluate this. This is 1 third over 8 over 9 minus 2 ninths over 8 over 9. And we can just subtract these two directly, I think. So 1 third minus 2 ninths gives us 1 ninth over 8 over 9 as our answer. Since both the top and the bottom are being div divided by 9, we can simply cancel those out, giving us the final result of 1 over 8. And so that should be our answer. OK. Let's move on to the final problem. And that would be show that 1 divided by n minus 1. Uh, let me write this out. Show that 1 divided by n minus 1 minus 1 over n plus 1 over n plus 1 is equal to n squared plus 1 over n times n squared minus 1. So, and uh, pr um, yeah, so and then after that, we need to hence determine the value of 1 over 5 minus 1 over 6, 1 over 5 minus 1 over 6 plus 1 over 7. Okay. This looks like a pretty easy proof, but it's also something pretty common, where they'll ask you to prove 
um, some form of like an equation equals another form if you rearrange it. In this case, we want to make sure all of these to be the common denominator, and helpfully, this is the lowest common denominator, sorry, the lowest common multiple of these three numbers. So we can simply multiply this by these two, this by these two, and this by these two. So we have, therefore, n times n plus 1 divided by n times n plus 1 minus n plus 1, uh, so times n minus 1, minus n minus 1 times n plus 1 divided by n times n plus 1 times n minus 1. And finally, we have plus n times n minus 1 over the same, n times n plus 1 times n minus 1. So if we um, combine all these into a single fraction, we get that n squared plus n minus n squared plus 1 plus n squared minus n all over n times n plus 1 times n minus 1, which is n times n squared minus 1, the difference of two squares. So uh, what can we cancel out here? We can immediately cancel out those two, and we can cancel out these two. And so we're left with n squared plus 1 over n times n squared minus 1. Is that what we originally needed to prove? Yep, so we've proved it successfully. And just put green around this. Okay. And we want to determine 1 fifth minus 1 6 plus 1 7. In this case, we can see that this is the same as what we have down below here. And it's when n is equal to 6. So we can simply substitute n into here. So we have 6 squared plus 1 over 6 times 6 squared minus 1. So that's 37 divided by 6 times 35, which is equal to, uh, pull out a calculator, 6 times 35 is equal to 210. So the answer is simply equal to 37 divided by 210. And there. So that was the end of these first set of proof problems. Um, if you continue to watch my later speedruns, you'll see me solving some more proof problems. And I hope to see you there.